Let me begin by thanking organizers and Marco Baravalli in particular for this invitation. I wish we could all be together in the same place at Sala Docs to give and receive camaraderie support that in times as politically and personally dramatic as these, we all emphatically need. Our reflection here takes as a point of departure the efforts to collectively organize care and mutual aid in response to the pandemic. Our extended pirate care network has been documenting these practices over the last month and a half in our Flatten the Curve, Grow the Care syllabus topic. What the current pandemic has demonstrated is that the economies are embedded in and subordinate to the stability of societies. The coming planetary environmental crisis is bound to demonstrate that the societies are embedded in and subordinate to the stability of nature. Yet, if we stay with the present crisis, the capacity of care and ability for adaptation have been shown to be critically lacking, undercut by decades of neoliberal restructuring that has crippled social and ecological systems from being able to respond to a disease of whose imminence we were warned. Here, I want to improvise three thoughts starting from this incapacity, staying close to the practice in order to say something about first, brittleness, second, ecosystemic health, and third, knowledge and strategy in the face of planetary ecological crisis. First, how is it possible that a mere week of disruption can cause critical shortages of food? That a million of and a half of people in the most affluent nations, such as the UK, can go hungry for a day or more? that 15 million of those living from paycheck to paycheck in the US might need assistance from food banks. That in the global food system where a third of produced food is wasted, UN is warning that 265 million might be pushed to the brink of starvation. That the most fundamental good for maintaining human lives, that is food, can, can be so scarce yet wasted. Our comrades from Cooperation Birmingham read this condition in practice. They read it as a combined result of the capitalist system of food provision, punitive system of food banks set up by the paternalist welfare institutions, and the political disempowering of the working class. They themselves have responded by organizing a solidarity kitchen, transforming a cooperative cafe and organizing over 60 volunteers to deliver daily over 150 free warm meals to those in need. As they write in their contribution to our syllabus, we need popular mutual aid to become strong alternative institution, to take power from political elites and redistribute it among the working class. We need to have a major role in writing the new rules of the world to come. Another facet of the breakdown of food provision is the shortage of seasonal labor. With borders closed, the anti-migrant governments are now facing shortages of exploitable migrant labor and are thus scampering to organize special flying regimes for workers from Eastern Europe in order so that they could come and pick asparagus and salad while providing neither them nor their communities with workplace or Medicare protection. To counter this, a coalition of trade unions and activists in Austria, Sezonieri, has been organizing with migrant seasonal workers. They recently put out a list of demands. They're requesting higher wages, sanitary conditions, compensation for, for health hazard, and abolition of both patriotic and anti-migrant discourses but also they demand a shift to a more just and sustainable system of food production. To answer the opening questions, our food systems are so brittle because all high throughput systems subsumed under the imperative of capitalist accumulation require just-in-time efficiency. While seemingly flexible, these systems have little redundancy to be adaptable to exogenous disruptions 
such as this pandemic. Global food production has been streamlined to cut the cost of labor, technology, and land. In the aftermath of this present disruption, we are bound to see hyper-automation of farms and recasting of food sovereignty along the nationalist lines. But neither technology nor nationalism will do away with brittleness. To do away with brittleness, we will need food provision organized on the principles of localization, collective and small holdership, better wages and labor conditions, and internationalism. Second, the last four decades have seen a threefold increase in leaps of pathogens from animals to humans. The increase of epidemics such as coronavirus is a consequence of a rapid incursion of industrial agriculture into wildlife habitats, as well as a growing inclusion of wildlife species into capitalist commodity chains. The interface zones between the receding wildlife habitats and encroaching farms facilitate zoonotic leaps. Once pathogens leap from wildlife species to industrially farmed animals, intensive farming provides them with perfect conditions for quick spread and mutations. From industrial or wildlife species grown and hunted for human consumptions, pathogens then easily jump to human populations. Ecosystems whose complexity is reduced by incursion of industrial agriculture have a lower capacity to hold the spread of epidemics among the wildlife species. The implication of that is that the health of humans, the livestock, and the wildlife is, as the concept of One Health suggests, an integrated whole. The degraded condition of this ecosystemic health is, however, the result of a large-scale transformation of natural habitats. Humans have significantly transformed 75% of land and 66% of sea biomes. The driver behind this degradation is a combined process of extraction, reduction of complexity, and exploitation that Donna Haraway has succinctly called plantation machine and that in the present needs to be viewed, as epidemiologist Robert Wallace suggests, in terms of relational geographies of global circuits of capital, where pig farming in China and cattle farming in the Amazon is financed by the likes of Goldman Sachs and BlackRock. Third, how do we counter the capitalist brittleness in the face of ecosystemic destabilization and disease? There is no easy answer and no one answer. Just as there is really no one line representing baseline capacity of care in the pandemic, but rather many lines depending on one's class, gender, race, and territory. There is a need for a different organization of provision for human needs in nature. One that is partly disentangling from nature to leave more biocapacity for non-human parts of ecosystems and yet at the same time, one that is plural, less impactful and entangled and interdependent with local and global ecosystems. Principles of agroecology, for instance, offer an antidote to the brittleness of food systems. These practices, while local and plural, can be more productive per person and per hectare than conventional industrial architecture, uh, agriculture while more carbon absorbing, biodiversity defending, and resilient in the face of climate change. How do we counter the capitalist brittleness is both a question of instability of knowledge and the instability of practice. The strategies of adaptation in the current pandemic are organized around the disease whose behavior is largely defined by the unknowns. The results of these strategies also can only be understood with weeks of delay. This is why standard theoretical think pieces fail to read the radical epistemic and political novelty of this situation. Similarly, with the planetary ecological crisis, the strategy of adaptation will need to become a constant adaptation of strategies. 
it will have to stay with practice with the practices and their effects in order to save lives and ecosystems incrementally attentively erring on the side of caution and politically we are fortunate it will be stretching not over weeks but decades and starting not from the affluent but not non-affluent nations hopefully with no periods of isolation even in the unlikely case that there is a turnaround from the neoliberal playbook of brittleness from the current neo-fascist new feudalist and new Darwinist political tendencies, and that the global Leviathan can be moved to act on climate change, people and ecosystems across the world will nevertheless depend on collective organizing of care and mutual aid, depend on the collective strategies of adaptation based on unstable knowledge devised in practice, incrementally, attentively erring on the side of caution. These practices will have little choice but to write the rules of the new world. Thank you.